What's up guys, JT Anime Nerd here, bring you all that nerdy goodness. Today we continue my concept for a Spyro the Dragon TV series with episode 4. Now when it comes to new characters, we will be introducing two new villains in this episode, but one can't speak unfortunately. However, along with the, the other villain, there are also two new characters to be introduced, and that's Spyro and Sparks' Dragonfly parents, Flash and Nina, who we saw at the beginning of episode 1. Now when it comes to Flash, I imagine him being wise and a bit of a stereotypically macho stereotype, as well as slightly comedic like Sparks. So I imagine him being voiced by Darren Norris, who we all know as the voices of Cosmo, Jorgen Von Strangle, and Timmy's dad and Fairly Odd Parents. Now when it comes to Nina, and I know this will probably feel like an out of nowhere casting, but I imagine Oprah Winfrey as the voice of Nina. Nina's meant to be that strong, wise mother figure for Sparks, and so I feel Oprah would be perfect for that. Plus, we don't hear her voice in voice acting so often, and I know she voiced the goose in Charlotte's Web, but I remember her most from Disney's Princess and the Frog, to which she played the same wise mother role to Tiana, which is why I've chosen her for this role. Finally, the villain of Metalhead for this episode will be voiced by Ron Perlman. Metalhead's a bigger villain in this series than he's made out to be in the games, so you're gonna want to bring in a voice actor bit big enough for such a role, and you'll know why in this episode. So, with all that said and done, I give you episode 4, Heavy Metalhead. The episode begins at Ember's house, where Spyro, Flame, and Ember would be discussing and analyzing Ember's spirit gem that's on the living room table. So, a spirit gem, huh? A lot smaller than I thought it would look like. The one I broke was bigger. Well, Granny won't mention it, anything to me about it. She keeps dodging the subject every time. Suddenly, Sparks enters the room. Hmm, maybe we can find a book on it. Sparks then begins to zoom around Spyro and friends. Nah, they're closed on Sundays. What about Elder Aster? Nah, he's busy with politics and stuff. So is Nestor for some reason. Hey guys, what's up? What's with the rock? Did Delbin finally pass that kidney stone? You know what it is, Sparks. It's my spirit gem. The one my mom left me? We got a lot of questions left over after the whole slumber party incident. So we're kinda investigating on our own here. You sure you don't want a break? I'm itching to go catch some butterflies. Not today, Sparks. Sorry. I'm kinda hungry, guys. Then we'll have Granny make us some snacks, but we gotta figure out something about this thing first. You guys sure you don't want to hang out on this special sunlit day? What makes it unlike any other day, Sparks? <sighs> well, do you at least need my help with anything? You can help if you want, but I don't know if magic's your M.O. Well, I know magic, what do you mean? Your spells haven't exactly been the best, and they've been known to cause some damage. Name a time and a place. We then see a quick and hilarious flashback of the swamp being on fire. The swamp's on fire! Okay, name another. The cat asshole's on fire! Okay. Name one more. Uh, I'm on fire! A lot, a lot of those incidents seem to involve a lot of fire. What? That one had a happy ending. Mm -hmm. Be honest. Do I look bad without scales? As Aster opens the door, Spyro and friends look on at Aster's hidden visage. Ah! Yeesh! Scales didn't grow back for a month, dude! <laughs> and the sight of an elderly, naked dragon robbed us of our innocence. Sorry, Sparks. Maybe let us handle this one today. Uh, okay, never mind. I'll go fetch breakfast on my own. Later, Sparks. Later. Bro. Sparks flies out of the room, saddened by how Spyro and his friends view him. Man, I can't believe it. They think I'm a joke. And on top of that, Spyro forgot my birthday. And his hatch day. I even got tickets to that band that sucks so badly that they're funny. Spyro loves those guys. The roaring thunders. They roar so loud, it makes thunder appear. More like makes our eardrums rumble like thunder. <sighs> they think I'm just some screw up. Since I dropped, ever since I dropped out out of dragonfly magic class, Sparks then snaps his fingers.
That's it. I can use my magic to find a way to help out. Then they'll see I'm not so useless. What exactly can I do? Sparks then looks over into the living room and notices the spirit gem on the table. Ah, got an idea. Meanwhile, in a cave within the mountains, Toasty and Blowhard enter. All right, it's taken us two days to get here. What's the deal? It seemed faster on my stilts, what can I say? You literally attacked the dragons on the same day as you left this hovel. Well, what do you want from me? It's a cartoon. Toasty then awkwardly looks in the direction of the screen. Wah, wah. Toasty then continues it into the, the cave. Anyway, welcome to my humble abode. By the powers of convexity. Blowhard looks in awe as he takes in the sight of Toasty's cave. Amazing, isn't it? I've been thinking of redecorating. Toasty and Blowhard then walk into Toasty's main work area. If we're going to get our revenge on those accursed dragons... <laughs> Toasty quickly closes his mouth out of embarrassment. Blowhard then stares at him with an awkward expression. You didn't hear that! <clears throat> it happens when I'm excited. Toasty and Blowhard then approach something big under a giant tarp. Allow me to introduce... Metalhead! Toasty removes the tarp to reveal a large robot under it, not yet in function. Blowhard just looks upon it in shock. I don't believe it! It's an ancient Nork Sentinel! Where did you find this? You think a bunch of oblivious dragons are gonna believe that a single sheep would haul this ancient piece of machinery? I put it back together using spare parts from the old battlefield. It's even made out of orichalcum. The rarest mystical ore in all of the Six Kingdoms. Incredible. Is it functional, though? Sadly, no. Jacques! Suddenly, a creepy mechanical jack-in-the-box hops toward Toasty and gives him his clipboard. My personal assistant. Built him myself. It gets lonely down here, so I'm glad to have a new roomie. Anyway, the numbers state that I need a power source with enough energy to wipe out a kingdom to power this much orichalcum. The shard would do. Even a sliver would be enough to power all this orichalcum. Only one problem. Old man asked to unlock the thing up tight. You know where he hid it? I like to wander into the castle from time to time. He's got it in the vault. Oh great. How are we gonna get into the vault? Not to worry, my friend. I have an idea. Just then, Toasty begins to laugh, much to Blowhard's uncomfortable feeling. <laughs> Toasty then covers his mouth in embarrassment. Again. You didn't hear that! That night, Ember is fast asleep in her room. Meanwhile, outside her window, Sparks is looking through her bedroom window, noticing her pendant on the table. Okay, so how'd a guy get in there? Hmm... Ah! Sparks then uses his magic to create a little blowtorch on his finger. He then inches closer to the glass. Ah, nope, nope, no fire. Sparks then snuffs out the blowtorch finger. Ah, <sighs> it's the best spell I got. Sparks then looks to his left and notices a, sl a second slightly opened window. Okay, so I've got bad death perception. Sparks then sneaks into Ember's house, followed by sneaking into her room and taking the pendant. Sparks then successfully sneaks out of the house with a spirit gem in hand. Okay, now I just gotta get to work. Back to the swamp. The next day, the Spyro and Flame walk up to Ember's house. Suddenly, Ember crashes out of her bedroom window, almost like a maniac. It's gone! What's gone? Your stuffed sheep? Ember then zooms over and gets in Spyro's face, her angry face looking at, at a slightly submissive Spyro who looks at Ember in hilarious fear. Watch how you talk about Sir Pluffs a lot. Purple butt! My bad. I'm talking about my pendant. What? I woke up this morning and it was gone from my bedroom. Well, where could it be? What I did find where it was was this. Ember then pulls out a bag of golden dust. Dragonfly shedding. Dragonflies can shed? How do you think puberty works for insects? There's no question to who this belongs to. Sparks. But why? I don't know. When I find him, I'm going to turn him blue, and not because of magic depletion. Ember then begins walking toward the direction of Artisan Castle, Spyro and Flame following behind.
Meanwhile, in Artisan Castle, Aster is taking a nap in his room while Toasty and Blowhard sneak in into the cat castle through a secret doorway. Why would they build a secret doorway in here? Isn't it would make things too easy to steal? They didn't. Blowhard looks on at Toasty with an expression of curiosity, but shrugs it off for the time being. Toasty then walks up to and looks inside Aster's drawers. Why are we looking in his underwear drawer? Wait a minute. Why would he need underwear? There are some secrets better off a mystery, my friend. As Toasty shuffles through the drawer, the shuffling suddenly stops. Ha ha! What? You find the key? Better. Toasty then pulls out the green spirit gem shard from Aster's underwear drawer. Okay, Aster's just sick. Back in the Dragonfly Village in the swamp, Sparks is in his room going through all of his parents' books of spells in an attempt to try and tap into the spirit gem's knowledge. Suddenly, a hammer falls down on the spirit gem, ironically breaking the hammer instead upon contact. Well, that didn't work either. Sparks then throws away the broken hammer. There's gotta be a way to get into this thing. Sparks, honey? Da, oh, Sparks. As Sparks attempts to hide the spirit gem, he stops for a moment, followed by looking into the direction of the screen. And for all those boys and girls watching, it's only okay if I say it. Don't be intolerant, kids. Sparks then swiftly hides the pendant under his beanbag chair. Why do I even have this? I could sit on air. Just then, Sparks' mother Nina enters his room. Sparks? You've been cooped up in your room all night. Your father and I are getting worried. Nina then looks around to notice the mess of spellbooks on the floor. Have you been spending all night training again? Nah, just a little studying. The last few times you said it was just a little studying, you brought a wasp girl into your room. She looked like a dragonfly, Ma. I got catflied. Ah, <sighs> I'm happy to see you working so hard. But there's a difference between training and overdoing it. Now what's wrong? You and your brother get into it again? <sighs> Every time I'm always looked at Spyro's sidekick. The only useful time I had was when I protected it from Nasty Nork. And you were able to create a barrier all on your own? Do you know how long it took your father just to manifest a construct? That's not the point, Ma. I don't just want to be remembered as moral support. That's why I gotta help Spyro with this problem magically. However I can. <laughs> I understand. But you should always remember that there's nothing wrong with relying on others. It is when you can't do anything. You saved your brother. That's something. I guess. Nina then begins tidying up Sparks' room and putting the books back on the shelves. You know... There's a story my mother once told me. It's the story of a seed that wanted to grow into a beautiful flower, but it didn't know what kind of seed it was. So, the seed made friends with the sky, and in return, the sky gifted rain to the seed in hopes of seeing it grow. In all that time, the seed expected to grow into a flower, but when the sky had the sun to tell the seed it was okay to grow, the seed grew not into a flower, into a tree. Oh, that's just great. So you're saying your dreams never turn out like you hope, and I'm gonna get it fat. Well, no, and definitely no. It turned out better, actually. The tree was disappointed that it wasn't a flower, but instead of becoming a flower, its branches grew its own flowers. So instead of becoming a flower, it could, could bloom its own, and the tree raised the flowers from birth becoming a father in the end. Wait, wait, what's going on? Uh, are you pregnant? Because I don't think I can handle another brother or sister. <laughs> no, Sparks. The moral of the story is that the seed couldn't do anything without the help of the sky. There may be some things you can do, but there are some things you can't do alone. Your father taught me that much. Suddenly, a huge crash is heard out from outside. Duh! Who forgot to close a spider gate? We have it closed for a reason! Speaking of which, just remember what I said, sweetheart. It'll all work out. Oh, and happy birthday, baby. Ah, ma. After Nina takes her leave, Sparks pulls out uh, the spirit gem. All right, there's got to be a way into this thing. Sparks then flies up to his bookshelf and then finds one spell book in particular, one with an odd symbol on it. Cosmic Book of Spirit and Souls. 
Did my uncle start drinking out of a toilet after reading this? Sparks thinks for a moment. Nah, I'm sure it's okay. Sparks flies back down to the floor, and then opens the book to study it. Back at Toasty's laboratory, the trio of villains gets ready to begin the experiment. So we put the shard in it and it turns on? No, you ignoramus! Then we wouldn't be able to study the shard! Toasty then approaches Blowhard while checking his clipboard of data. Ignoramus is a little hurtful. What was that? Nothing, nothing. I'm going to extract the shard's energy to fuel the Sentinel using the lab's power generator. How do you think I have electricity? So why am I even here? You could have gotten the shard yourself this whole time. True. But it takes more than science to crack Ori Calcum. Especially in machines. It needs a certain... mystical touch. Ori Calcum may be magic resistant, but its mystical properties can't be tapped without someone being able to control such energies. And I appear to have a suitable sorcerer right here. I'm more prominent to wind magic. That'll do fine. Are you up for it? Blowhard looks up at the robot, contemplating the idea. Blowhard then begins to cackle. <laughs> Let's destroy some dragons. Back in his room, Sparks analyzes a page of the book that teaches astral projection. Well, Ember did say her ancestors were literally in this rock. I bet the family reunions are just as fun. Maybe they can give me answers. Okay, here we go. As Sparks waves his hands, they begin to glow a golden aura. The shard's hooked up! Ready? Blowhard is shown grabbing a hold of two diodes connected to the power generator. Exquisitely! Sparks then places his hands on the spirit gem. Death to all dragons! And with luck, some delicious ones too. Toasty then presses a red button on his console, transferring the green spirit gem's energy to Metalhead. Meanwhile, Blowhard casts a lightning spell on the diodes, transferring some of his mystical energy east to Metalhead as well. Back in his room, as Sparks comes into contact with the yellow uh, with the gem, the golden aura from Sparks' hands enters it, creating a wide yellow flash of light that swiftly engulfs the room. Back at the lab, the energy is adding to Metalhead, as shown in the energy meter. It's working! <sighs> Suddenly, the energy meter goes over the limit and is about to overload. Oh, fluff. In a flash, the energy within Metalhead explodes, creating smoke that swiftly flies out of the cave. Back in Sparks' room, as the light dims, seemingly nothing happens. Sparks then opens his eyes to look around for a bit. He then begins to feel a bit frustrated. Well, that's a dud. I'm letting my uncle know I want my money back. <sighs> Suddenly, Sparks' eyes begin to illuminate a golden aura from his pupils. The spirit gem then shows him visions. One of a scarred battlefield in a land that he doesn't recognize. Whoa, looks like someone had a party. Why wasn't I invited? The sound of a booming roar is then heard. Uh, that better be the shed fairy mama told me about. Sparks then turns and looks up to see a giant cloud of black smoke in the shape of a large dragon, its eyes glowing white and flying down towards Sparks. Duh! Don't eat me up too chewy! In an instant, Sparks' eyes begin to glow again, him now seeing what looks to be a vast void with a vortex at its center and planets all around it. Finally, the next vision Sparks sees is a mural, one depicting a purple dragon at its center. Spyro? Back in reality, Sparks is slightly disoriented. Okay, that was some trip. No more astral projection before bed. Wait a minute. Sparks then finds himself and the spirit gem out in the woods suddenly, not too far from his village. How do I get out here? Ah, uh, well, no matter. I should get to Spyro and tell him, that, tell him what I found. How very interesting! As Sparks hears the familiar voice, he looks up in fearful curiosity, only to see three villains standing above him, accompanied by the newly activated Metalhead. My if you shared what you found? Oh, Sparks. One hour earlier, in the aftermath of the lab explosion, the smoke begins to clear with the green spirit gem just inches away from Blowhard. 
who's beginning to regain consciousness. From another part of the lab, Toasty and Jacques also regain consciousness. Blowhard! You alive? <coughs> as alive as I can be. Did it work? Toasty and Blowhard then stand up, Blowhard taking the spirit gem shard in hand. The two then look into a huge cloud of smoke, only to see a pair of green glowing eyes within the cloud. Just then, a beam of blue energy is released, barely missing Blowhard and Toasty. Toasty and Blowhard then look on as Metalhead steps forward. Ah! <laughs> it worked! Metalhead grunts as he reaches his hand out to grab at Toasty and Blowhard. Toasty's expression then becomes that of fearful. Uh, maybe it worked a little too well. Metalhead then begins yelling in, in rage as he attempts to attack Blowhard and Toasty, both running away from Metalhead as best as they can and all over the cave. After a lengthy chase, Metalhead stops for a moment, seemingly fatigued despite being a machine. Ooh, where am I? Blowhard's expression then turns from one of fear to shock. That voice, it can't be. Metalhead sees his reflection on a nearby machine, causing him great distress. What? What happened? What have you done to me? What are you talking about? You serve me! Serve? I serve no one! Metalhead then swiftly charges at Toasty and Blowhard, leading the two to cower in fear as Blowhard also sticks out the spirit gem shard. Suddenly, the shard then glows, which in turn causes Metalhead to stop in his tracks. What? I... I can't move my body! Blowhard then looks up upon Metalhead in shock and awe. I don't believe it. It is you. Wait a minute, what's going on? I didn't program Metalhead with a voice box. Although that should have been on my bucket list. How dare you insult me? You said this was a spirit gem, correct? Yes, the same kind of crystal that holds the spirits of dragons. I've done my studies. Oh, there lies the misconception, Toasty. Many think only dragon souls can exist within a spirit gem. What exactly are you saying? Tell me, Metalhead. What's the last thing you remember? How dare you! What do you remember last? The shard then glows, signifying Blowhard forcefully bending Metalhead to his will. Just then, Metalhead begins to groan in distress. I... Remember a battlefield, clad in fire and brimstone. The last thing I saw were a pair of wings and a fire of a strange hot color. How did you do that? It seems because his spirit is tied to the shard, the one who holds it bends him to his will. And what do you intend to do with me, dear old friend? You're about to achieve your ultimate goal. Destroying the dragons. Starting with the most annoying of them all. I'm listening. Back in the present, in the Artisan Kingdom, Spyro and friends look around for sparks. Spyro and friends then approach the nearest dragon, who just so happens to be painting a portrait of Artisan Castle. Let's ask around. Hey, Delvin. Have you seen Sparks? Actually, yeah. We then see a flashback of Delbin noticing Sparks coming out of a library. He kept coming back and forth from the library. Seemed like he was looking for something, but couldn't find what he was looking for. That was the last I saw of him. From what I remember, he headed toward the direction of the border swamp. That's where you both live, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks, Delbin. Anytime, Spyro. As Delbin continues painting, Spyro and friends then take their leave towards Sparks' direction. Oh great, now we have to wander through the swamp. It's so mucky. Then it would and it would be called a swamp. Spyro then shows a slightly saddened expression. Thinking about him, Spyro? I just can't believe Sparks would just take the gem and not tell us. What was he thinking? <sighs> well, we gotta admit, we were kinda rude to him yesterday. The little guy did just want to help. Yeah, but 
It's Sparks! We know. But, but he did end up saving you from Nasty Nork and helped you realize that you didn't need to leave your family. You need to find your family. Yeah, okay. You got me there. But what's your guys' excuse? <sighs> we can be jerks. Mm -hmm. Join the club. Come on. We'll go ask mom and dad where he is. As Spyro and friends head in the direction of the swamp, Metalhead and company are on a cliff top overlooking the Artisan Kingdom. Looks like the plan is working quite perfectly. Ta, I'm to get to work. Just then, Metalhead looks down, glaring at Spyro and friends, his thoughts in a somewhat familiar place. Mm. Moments later, Spyro and friends arrive at Dragonfly Village in the Border Swamp, only to find it almost ransacked, much to Spyro's distress. Oh no! Spyro zooms into the village in slight distress. Mom! Dad! Spyro! Spyro then runs up to Nina, who is carrying her husband Flash over her shoulder. What happened here? Is everyone okay? Oh, of course, don't worry. Your father here had a little incident with spiders. People were so afraid that they're calling it the Great Spider War. More like Turf Tussle. <laughs> Spiderberg! Oh, happy Hatch Day, by the way, Spyro. Yesterday, anyway. Hatch Day? Oh, no. What's up? If yesterday was my Hatch Day, then that means it was Sparks' birthday, too. And I forgot it. How'd you forget? I hardly noticed my Hatch Day because it reminded me of how alone I was. But now I've gotten so used to it, that I didn't even notice it was my brother's birthday, too. Mom... Have you seen Sparks? He kinda took something of Ember's and we're trying to find him. Looks like I also owe him an apology too. Ah, so that's what he was hiding under his beanbag chair. Thank goodness, I thought it was another wasp girl. Oh boy, that was an adventure. Enough to warrant its own episode? Shh, no fourth wall breaking flame. You'll break the illusion. It was the oddest thing. We then get a flashback of Nina kicking spider butt. I was helping your father with a spider problem. She then notices Sparks with glowing yellow eyes with Ember's pendant in hand. When I saw Sparks leave with the spirit gem. Back in the present. You know what it is? You'd be surprised just how close the dragons and dragonflies used to be before the Nork Wars. You should be careful with that. They say those that perish near a spirit gem have their own spirit trapped within it. I wouldn't go dying with that thing on. That's, uh, very morbid warning, but thanks. At least now I know why my mother's spirit resides within. Actually, that's not entirely true. What? Well, you see... Just then, an explosion is heard from the direction of the Artisan Kingdom. What? What the? That came from the Artisan Kingdom. We should get back. But what about Sparks? I'm sure he's safe. Let's hurry. Back in the Artisan Kingdom, Spyro and friends come back to see the dragons of Artisan Kingdom once again turned into crystal statues. That... spell again? We meet again, little dragons, and this time you won't escape! Spyro and friends look on at Toasty and company, shocked at the array of villains before them. Oh no, not Sheep Creep again. Don't call me Sheep Creep, it's Toasty. Whatever. Sheep Creep. No! It doesn't matter! Just then, a puff of smoke appears, with Blowhard emerging from it with a shard in hand. Your doom is plain at hand! Blowhard? Ember then notices what Blowhard has in his hand. He's got the spirit gem shard! The one Nasty had! Blowhard then raises the shard. Finish him, Metalhead! Just then, Metalhead walks up. Spyro and friends then look up in shock at what's in front of them. They got a giant robot, dude! Guys! Guys! What the? Sparks? Metalhead's chest cavity then opens, revealing a captive Sparks behind bars. Sparks! Get me out of here! It smells like gasoline and farts. Your farts to be exact. Hey! Have you smelled our room lately? Well, well. 
had to see it to believe it. Never knew a purple dragon even existed. Metalhead then takes notice of Ember. A pink dragon as well. <laughs> it must be my birthday. You don't seem to be like any regular robot. Vigilant. Allow me to demonstrate your point! Metalhead then shoots beams of magic at Spyro and friends, leading them to dodge and try and fight as best as they can. The three shoot flames at Metalhead, only for the flames to have no effect. What? That metal! It's Ori Kalkum! Ori what him? Don't you even pay attention in class! The strongest metal in the entire realm! Against it, your flames are nothing! Realm? Chaw Arch Dive, quickly! The three then fly upwards, and then in charge downward with their horns. And as they do, Metalhead counters with a simple backhanded punch, knocking the trio down. Guys! Metalhead then walks toward the trio, looking down at them as they can hardly stand after the last attack. Well, well, well. So my eyes don't deceive me. Take a picture! It'll last longer! I don't mean you, Purple Dragon. I mean her. What? You have the same eyes. Eyes of ferocity. Just like she did. I finally remember. What are you talking about? There's only one pink dragon I've met with those same eyes. A general of a battalion of dragon knights. At the front lines. Ember then realizes who he's talking about. You really aren't some robot, aren't you? Just who is he then? I believe you all know him. The former commander of the Nork Empire, Nolly Nork! No way! You? That's impossible. Unless. he died near one. What? Like your mom said, if anyone perishes near a spirit gem, their spirit becomes trapped within as well. Spirit? That's it! Unexpectedly, Sparks flies deeper into Metalhead's body. Yes, but that's not all. The only reason I perished was because of damage sustained from the most powerful dragon I had ever faced. One that had the very same necklace that we retrieved. The one whose life I took with my own hands. Ember's eyes then widen, beginning to fill with rage. My mother... You... Destroyed her. The greatest accomplishment so far. And soon, the rest of you dragons will face the same fate. In her rage, Ember's eyes begin to glow pink, leading her to breathe flames of pink, the ones referred to as the Soul Flame. Meanwhile, inside of Metalhead, Sparks notices the pink flames behind him as he bl is blocked by a wall of metal in front of him. Whoa! Okay, okay. What do I do? Big thing. Come on, Sparks. Can't just leave him like... Wait a minute. Sparks then uses his blowtorch finger spell. Fire! Sparks then creates a hole in the wall of metal, going deeper inside of Metalhead's body. Back outside, Ember has expended her flames, unable to breathe any more out, leaving Metalhead undamaged. The same flames that damaged my old body. Now it can't even leave a burn mark. I'm going to enjoy getting my vengeance out of turning her daughter into a prized trophy. Within Metalhead's body, Sparks finds the power core at the center of it. I swore I wouldn't do this before bedtime, but rules are meant to be broken. Sparks then begins to wave his hands, radiating yellow light from them. Hang on guys, sidekick's coming! Sparks then charges at the core. Outside, Metalhead aims his open hand at Spyro and friends, ready to turn them to crystal. Glory to the Nork Empire! Suddenly, Metalhead uses his hand to punch himself in the face, much to Blowhard, Toasty, and Jacques' shock. What the? How did- Knock knock! Metalhead's right eye then turns from green to golden yellow. How? How are you in my head? I'm not out in your head, big boy. I'm in your soul. Sparks' control over Metalhead's body then leads me to Metalhead continuing to punch himself. Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! After the last punch, Metalhead is knocked down. Dude, why do you keep hitting yourself? 
Metalhead then gets up in a rage, beginning to rip his own body apart to get Sparks out. Get out of my body! I'll rip your wings off and snap your insect body like a twig! What are you doing? Stop! I command you! Blowhard uses the shard to control Metalhead. However, it doesn't work for some reason. Why isn't it working? The Dragonflight spirit! It's disrupting the shard's signal! It can't control a soul not bound to it! Stop ripping yourself to pieces! As Metalhead nearly reaches the center of his body, his hand has entered the power core's main chamber. There you go. A little closer. Getting warmer. Peekaboo! Metalhead in all his rage accidentally yanks out his power core in a blind rage, leading him to fall while down, unable to move. No! Can nothing go right? What's happening? I can't move! Sparks, now back in his body, exits Metalhead. It's by body. Worst factory tour ever. But hey, at least the factory settings are on again. Just then, Blowhard uses the shard to lift Metalhead in the air. You may have won this time, dragons, but this is only the beginning. Yeah, we still got the other spirit gem. With a snap, Blowhard uses magic to escape. Not a trace of them seen. Sparks then approaches his friends. Guys, you okay? The trio gets up, recovered from Metalhead's attack. Yeah, and Sparks, that was amazing. How'd you do that, dude? Studying a whole bunch of books has its perks, especially when it's spell books. In fact, with a snap of his fingers, Sparks makes Ember, his pendant, reappear. My pendant? But how did you... Sparks puts the pendant back around Ember's neck. Snagged it when in my cage passed it. Spyro then approaches Sparks with a saddened expression. Sparks, I'm sorry. We all are. What we said wasn't cool. And on top of that, I even forgot about your birthday. I'm sorry I've been treating you like a plus one when you're supposed to be my equal. My favorite it brother. I'm your only brother, pal. And eh, I've gotten over it. A bit. I just wish there was a way I could make it up to you. Oh, there is. Back at Ember's house, Spyro and friends enter with all of them having expressions of hilarious disdain. Those ro roaring thunders were worse than I remember. Yeah, I'm starting to regret those tickets. You know, all this has got me thinking. Maybe we should take a break from trying to figure the spirit gems out. I think I figured some things out when I, I was studying it, but yeah. It'll be nice to return to our episodic scheduled programming. At least after episode 5, that is. Ain't that right, boys and girls? Sparks then winks at the screen. Meanwhile, Spyro and friends look at Sparks awkwardly. Sparks? Who are you talking to? Uh, no one. Mwah. That night, in the Snork's stronghold, an explosion bursts the main entrance doors open, catching the attention of the Norks inside. Suddenly, beams of magic start shooting from the smoke. Oak, leading to the Norks to run in panic. Just then, Nasty Nork appears, with Dr. Shemp accompanying him, his hands bound in chains. Who dares attack my castle? From the smoke emerge Blowhard, Toasty, Jacques, and a rebuilt Metalhead. Blowhard? I told you he was up to something! Now let me go! I can help! Zip it, prisoner! I'm still thinking about it. Plus, it's been a while since we had any prisoners, so I'm really having fun with it at this point. Nasty Nork then stomps toward Blowhard and company. What is the meaning of this, Blowhard? You a traitor now? Blowhard then flies toward Nasty Nork. For years, I've suffered humiliation at the hands of the Norks. Blowhard then lands in front of Nasty, but then surprisingly bows to him. But even I know what it means to survive. Blowhard then presents Nasty with the shard. My crystal! Blowhard, you deceitful wretch! Traitors! As Metalhead charges forth, Blowhard stops him using the shard. Nasty's expression then turns to one of shock. His will bends to the crystal. That voice! 
Nasty Norg and Metalhead begin walking toward each other. <laughs> How the great Norg Empire has fallen with you at its head. Not only do our people remain in the Dragon Junkyard, but you have failed to raid the Artisan Kingdom, and you were defeated by a trio of youngling dragons! Like you could talk! Shockingly, Nasty then hugs Metalhead, realizing who it is. I thought I'd never see, uh, hear you again, big bro! <sighs> if you were really my brother, you'd surrender the throne. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm finally a somebody now, no longer living in your handsome shadow. We're twins, you dolt! Will you always look better? Even you were Dad's favorite. Oh yeah? Well, you were always a mama's boy. May the powers rest her soul. Doesn't matter. Nasty then takes the shard from Blowhard, placing it back on his mace. Because with this back, and with you as my ultimate weapon, we're gonna make our dream a reality. Very well. Then let us reclaim our homeland from the dragon invaders that stole it from us. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to check out our merch store, buy me a coffee page, and Amazon affiliate link linked in the description and pinned comment below. So you can help us expand the channel and give you guys higher quality content. Also, if you want to check out our original content, be sure to check out the playlists linked in the description below. With all that said and done, I'm JT Anime, and I'll check you guys later.